So, oh. Jake. Well, hello. Oh. Oh, let me get comfortable. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Your last one was an hour long. Let me get comfortable first. <laughs> this one's going to be shorter. <laughs> yeah. Don't. Famous don't last words. Trust. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait, what, 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 what's it, what's it, what? Why? Scrolling to animations. Yes, please. Warning. Experimental CSS feature ahead because this is not supported <laughs> in any browser at this very moment. Great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're just making up a lot of stuff, really. The spec exists. The, the spec, spec exists. exists. Okay. It's, it's undergoing a rewrite, but the spec exists and the information is there, but it's not available in any browser. Currently okay. spec fiction right now. But that's okay. That might leading towards reality more. Leading yeah. towards reality. That's what we should have yeah. called this episode. <laughs> I like it. I don't see this as like experimental features. I see this as very exciting CSS features ahead. And that's why I'm talking about it, because I think this is an amazing addition to, to CSS. But I, look, people have been wanting this for ages, right? And yeah, we've had yeah, sort yeah. of hacky ways of doing it with like 3D transforms and weird perspective hacks yeah. and stuff. But people just want the avatar to go into the corner and stay there or whatever. Like yeah. people have been wanting this for, for years and years yeah. now. For people who don't know what scrolling to animations are, this is an example here. And this is only CSS. What? That's cool. So this is CSS animations running, 3D transforms running, scroll snapping as well. That's and the then we have items. the scrolling to animations part where the cards, they, they move as you scroll uh, the scroller around it. That's very nice. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. Why is this so exciting? Well, these are hardware accelerated animations linked to scroll. It's running off the main thread, so it's not blocking anything and you don't need any JavaScript. Right. And that's the problem we have with the current solutions people are using, right? Because they listen to the, you know, the only way you can do it really is listen for the scroll event and then change yeah. stuff on the page. Or but, use an intersection observer maybe yes. as well. But you need JavaScript and it will be blocking by default. So which means like, you know, in a lot of cases the effect is going to be run running slower than real scrolling. And you end yeah. up with that disconnect and it doesn't it doesn't quite work yeah. properly. Or it stutters a little bit and you're like, ah. Exactly. But this works, right? This is this is no, this no will work. This will of course, <laughs> yes. We're thinking in the future. Will work. Yeah. Um, hopefully soon. More on that later. All right. What's also included, by the way, is a JavaScript extension to the Web Animations API to achieve the same thing. Good. So if, if you've written every, all your animations using uh, the Web Animations API, you can also apply these effects um, using some new JavaScript stuff that you add there to your existing code. Show me how. Yeah, so I wish to know how. One disclaimer, though, uh, people who have been following me on Twitter or whatever, and they might have read this article, it's, it's from February 2021. Yeah, not that old. Not that old. Well, um, this was about an older version of the spec, which yeah. is an entirely different syntax. When it comes to experimental web features, a year and a bit is may as well be 100 years. Yeah. yeah. So the information there, um, if, if, if you read it before, um, I would say like, OK, the concepts still hold true, but follow along because we're going to cover a new syntax in this episode right here. Excellent. Cool. But first, I need to explain like what is a scroll linked and what is a scroll triggered animation because there, there's a difference between both. Mm -hmm. A scroll linked animation is one like this, where you see the red line at the top. It's like a progress bar as you scroll. So, so if, it, if I move up and down. Yes. So yeah. essentially, the scroll bar becomes the, sc the scrubber uh, for the, uh, yeah. like if, if it was a video, like you're scrubbing the, the timeline yeah. of the video with the scroll bar. So if, if you scroll, it moves along. If you stop scrolling, it will pause there. If you continue scrolling again, so there, there's this direct connection as you scroll, the animation goes goes back and forth. Makes sense. This I is like a scroll it. linked animation. Uh huh. This in contrast to this, which is a scroll triggered animation. Right, and this is what people are using Intersection Observer for right yeah. now. Whereas the other one, I guess, is the is the scroll event. Um, you would if you're doing things frame, trying to do yeah. things as close to yeah. as frame by frame as possible. Whereas this Intersection Observer yeah. is good enough. So these scroll triggered animations, they they run once a certain point is reached and then animation runs and you, you, you can't stop it. it it's it's gone it's it's fired it's starting so there, there there's a difference here um, cool. to be clear this spec is about scroll linked animations a future edition might be scroll triggered animations but it's not covered yet well and i think it, mostly your scroll triggered stuff 
like the intersection observer is kind of good enough, right? It's yeah. it's uh, okay. But yes, it, you might want a way to do it without JavaScript, and that would be yeah, an advantage. That would be nice. But performance-wise, the intersection observer is going to get you there. Whereas with the other thing, we don't have a good performance way of doing that right yeah. now. True. Let's look at the basic example. Let's do it. Our progress bar at the top. Yeah. So I've visualized here. Um, with CSS, uh, we would create an element there and position it there using this little snippet. I'm using position fixed here, top left and right set to zero, a height and then a background so that we can see it right there. Yep. To animate it, say we want to animate it, what, your basic, what we basically want to do is you want to have it at like scale x zero and then stretch it out to scale x one so that it stretches out. And the reason you'd use scale there rather than width is to keep it all off the main thread, I guess. Yes. The keyframes will look like this, scale x from zero to one. We apply uh, the thing on there. We have a default transform so that we don't get like the so flash upon style content. Yeah. And then we oh, nice. attach the animation uh, forward so that when the animation is done, it stays in that position. And if we load up our document, it runs and it stops. Amazing. Yeah. So it's not linked to scroll right now. This is because this animation runs at document timeline. Right. And I've seen this at document.timeline, I believe, is an API that, that, that reflects this. I'm not um, aware of that. <laughs> uh, could be making it up. This I, is the I'll part where you take over the episode. And... <laughs> so I'll either put a, an apology or a link in the description, whether I'm right or wrong. I think I do think we have a JavaScript representation of the document timeline. But... Could be very <laughs> maybe, well. Maybe, so. maybe, maybe. Right. Sorry. The, the concept of this document timeline is um, when you load up a page, the document timeline starts at zero. And then every yes. time a second passes by, it adds a second. And it's... Everyone who's used performance.now, it's on the same timeline. And therefore, if you use request animation frame and you get a number passed in, that is also your document timeline number as well. Um, which date.now is different to because date.now started yep. at 1970. Whereas yes, this is this is document lifetime. So that means if we load up our page, our animation runs. Mm -hmm. If we refresh the page, it will run again, right? Because it started at zero again. Yeah. But what we do want to achieve here though is that we want to link this animation to um, the scroll our on. page scrolling. So we don't need a document timeline, but we need a different type of timeline. How would you call it? Is it going to be a scroll timeline? Yes, it's going to be a yes. scroll timeline. Uh, the, the full name is a scroll progress oh. timeline. Yeah, but, okay, yeah, whatever. We just call it a scroll timeline. Yeah, so a fine. scroll progress timeline. This timeline is linked to the progress of the scroll position along a particular axis. Uh -huh. and the axis being you can scroll vertically or you can scroll horizontally uh, in line and block in logical values uh, if you want. So, Makes sense. Yeah. And these start at 0% when you're at the very top. So if you load your page at the very top, you're at 0%. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you're at 100% uh, progress. And it's progress because it's, yeah, like you know, there's, there's still stuff in the viewport. So it's not it's not going from like 0% of the content height to 100 because you've got, when you're at the bottom, you've still got. There's a still a bit in the view. So yeah. it's, so, yeah, yeah it's sense. really tracking the progress of your, your scroll bar. Uh, in terms of percentages, I mean, it, it work, in CSS terms, it works more like background position than yeah. Yeah. left. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Because left would move it out of view. Out of view. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. We can do it like this Ooh. in CSS. This is good. We have our existing animation, so that code is still there. But we have an extra property, animation-timeline. We have a scroll function. Mm -hmm. You can give it an axis and a scroller, and you can see the question marks there. That means they are optional. Okay, so I mean, the default for scroller will be the root scroller, the, I, I guess. Um, the default for the axis, though, I guess why? It's common? Is that, yeah? Uh, almost correct. Almost correct. Oh, okay. So the, the axis, um, the axis parameter, that's one, uh, the axis of the scrolling. So you have block or inline. Uh, vertical or horizontal, the mm -hmm. default is the block direction. Okay, so yeah, not Because why by default, if, if your page, the content grows too large, you, you will scroll vertically in the block direction. So that's why, that's the default. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, and then the scroller, uh, that's that one is used to target the scroll container whose scroll progress you want to follow. Yeah. And we have got two keywords for that. We've got nearest or root. 
uh -huh. uh, nearest is that it will look up to the dump control of its parents and say which one scrolls here. Yep. And then root will target the root uh, scroll, which is the HTML. Element. So this is the bit I got wrong. This is like, because yeah. I, I guess roots, but so how does it determine what a scroll container is? So overflow hidden, is that a scroll container? This is the part where it gets technical. Yeah. There, there is a difference if you do um, overflow clip, overflow hidden, overflow scroll, and some of them um, create a scroller. Um, yeah, the ambiguous yeah. ones in my head. Overflow clip is not a scroll container. Overflow scroll is a scroll container. Yeah. The ambiguous ones for me are uh, overflow auto and overflow hidden. Like whether, because like overflow auto will sometimes behave like overflow hidden or overflow scroll depending on the size of the content. So does that switch depending on the amount of content or does it, uh, and, and then, you know, therefore is hidden scroll container. We, we can put a detail in the description for that. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, hidden will create a scroll container. You can't scroll it using your mouse, but you can scroll it through JavaScript. Yes, you can. So that suggests that it will be, and because you can't do that with overflow clip. Yeah. All right, yep. That sounds like a good answer to me. So for uh, our progress bar, we would use this, right? You have our element there, animation timeline, scroll, the block direction nearest because it is direct child of the body, so it will look up to uh, the HTML element. Um, block root would also have worked in this very case. So in this case, you could miss both of those out because those two are the defaults, right? So you could just do... Next slide. Hey! hey. Yes. There because they are the default. Uh, and that way you have a scroll linked animation in CSS. Wait, and that's, that, that's brilliant. That, that's it. That's amazing. <laughs> I like it as well. It's, it's cool, right? Yeah, that's really simple. Um, I guess the next questions are uh, like the avatar animation that slides into the corner and stays there. So that's where things like, I guess, boundaries and things come in. Yeah. Um, what we have tracked here are um, anonymous scroll uh, containers that we are tracking. Uh -huh. um, we can also use named ones. Uh, I'll cover it on the next few slides. Yeah. First, I will show you the JavaScript part because oh, yes, I mentioned yes, we also have a JavaScript implementation, right? Yeah. So using JavaScript, um, we have an extension to the Web Animations API. Uh, what we have there is a scroll timeline interface. Uh -huh. You can create a new instance of it and you can uh, add some option to, options to it to configure it. What would the options be? Well, it's probably the same as we had before, right? The, exactly, exactly. Yeah. We have the axis, block, inline, vertical, or horizontal which yeah. are strings here in this case, not, not keywords. Makes sense. Um, and then we have a source, uh, which takes any element as its value. Um, so that's a result of document.query selector or something else that you can pass. So here, um, I've been very explicit. I set the source to document or document element. Mm -hmm. the root scroll. And then we have our scroll timeline instance. That's really nice. Excellent. Without a scroll timeline, this would be our code. So we have our progress bar. Uh, we change the transform origin to start from the left. Yeah. And then we animate it, scale X, uh, and then the fill forward duration one second. Yeah. So we need to change that duration part and instead inject our timeline so that it doesn't run on document timeline, but on scroll timeline. Okay, so no no duration, then it's a different option, is it, I guess? Yeah, it's simply called timeline. And you pass in the instance like this. That's really nice. It's nice as well because like I'm starting to think of like other kinds of timelines that could go in there. So it's like yeah, like timelines at, a, at different frame rates. I know that's something that's been spoken about before. But yeah, this this is great. I like it. Why haven't we shipped this yet? I like it. <laughs> as I've said, we were tracking anonymous scroll progress timelines. You can also track named scroll uh, named scroll progress timelines. You can also track these. Let me start off with an example. We have a carousel here with an image inside and a progress bar for only that carousel. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. So yeah. if I swipe on the carousel, the next image comes into view and our progress bar advances. Mm -hmm. So now it's at uh, two thirds because I have three images in there. If I swipe again, the progress bar moves up again. Yeah. Very good. If yeah. I swipe back, then this happens. So I presume at the start of that, it had already been scrolled, which is why we could see some of the red to begin with. The start, it was at scroll position zero because we have three panels. We have three images next to each other. Uh huh. So when you're at the first image, you're at 33% of the things that can be visible. 
so why didn't that happen with your root scroll or, or maybe it did and i just didn't realize so when you had the red thing going across the top of the page that seemed to start at zero that's because i built it that way to say like hey you're at the top so i was tracking uh, the top position in my in the way I, that i built the animation yes um here i was tracking which panel are you viewing so i was watching panel one of three so oh. I had built my animation here this way to be at 33% already. Oh, I get it. I get it. Oh, okay. So you did that on purpose. Okay. So, so if you did the same code as before, it would start at this, the start, like a zero scale and go to a hundred, like when yeah. you're in the first panel. Right. I get it. Okay. Yeah. So here it starts at scale X uh, 0.3333. Perfect. Yeah. Right. I'm back in. Yeah. I understand. This is the markup that I have mm -hmm. for that. So I have a gallery, which is a wrapping element, and I have the scroll container with all three entries, and then I have the progress bar. Yeah. The problem is, if I use the scroll function here, it will only look up to the nearest scroller, which looks up to all parent elements or the root one. But the scroll container is a sibling of it. Oh. So we're kind of having a problem here. What we can do here is we want to have it track um, the scroll container instead of looking up. In yes. JavaScript, this is easy because our scroll timeline code, we can pass in a, a source and it can be any element. Yeah. Ex so we can before. use document.query selector again. So on the, on the second line there, we select the scroll container and we pass it in as the source for a scroll timeline later on. Easy peasy. And that way it will work. Even though, so we are looking at the, the scroll position of one element, but we are animating another element uh, elsewhere. And there's the bit where you've, with the scale X, that makes more sense to me now, how it, because yeah. like, you, you, yeah, that bit where it starts, I think that was deliberate. That, yep, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So in, in JavaScript, this is really easy, mm -hmm. uh, but in CSS, uh, our scroll function won't, won't cut it here, right? Mm. Uh, so we need something else. I guess it gets referenced by ID. No. 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 That I don't that, like being wrong. <laughs> that used to be the case um, before we had a selector function where you pass in a selector. I'm a big fan of it, but the CSS working group oh. is not. No. Okay. But we have a different way to target them. Okay. We can add a name to a certain scroller and, and then reference it by its name. Okay. Yeah, that works. This is where these named scroll progress timelines come into play. And this is the code. So on our scroll container, we set the scroll timeline name. We give it a name, gallery. Yeah. We can also define the axis by default block, but here we want it to scroll in line. We can use a shorthand if we want, which is scroll dash timeline axis and the name. Nice. And then later on in our code, we reference that gallery using the animation dash timeline property. Great. So instead of scroll, we now use the name. Ah, uh, probably a spec question, but if you have two scroll things of the same ID, does it just pick the first one or what? That's a good question, Jake. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I will cover it later on in, in the presentation. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, so this is uh, the CSS code, um, and that's why this works. We, we've already seen it. The, the, this, nice. this, this now works. Yeah. Um, I've cheated here, to be honest because that question you just asked me. This works because my HTML is structured like this. If my HTML would be structured like this, it would not work. Oh, so you're telling me the way the algorithm for finding nearest goes up through the siblings and then out? Not the algorithm for finding nearest, the, the algorithm for finding the a named. named scroll progress timeline. Ah, I get it And now. that one only looks at preceding siblings, so all elements before it, and then the parent. That's and then fun. again, all preceding ones. Uh, do you know what? Like, so typically in the past, when in CSS you've had to refer to another element, it's it's been by ID, and you mentioned before that there might have been some selector way of doing it. But I guess like I, I actually sort of like the system where you end up specifying a name in the CSS uh, and then referencing that name somewhere else because it means that you can change which element has that name with media queries which you can't do with an ID, which you can't do with a selector. You, you would you would have to change the ID you are pointing to or the the selector yeah, yeah. you're using. Where, but whereas a lot of times it's just like, oh, I just want to 
that change yeah. which element has. You just the attached the name label to a different element. Yeah, we did this with the... shared element transitions, and that's why we didn't use ID for a selector. Yeah. We, I guess, a very similar system. Cool. So that was kind of a cheat there. Uh, be wary of it. You can't reference names, scroll progress, timelines down the dump tree, only up the dump tree. That's fine. And it was sort of convenient that it was afterwards anyway, <laughs> due to the Z indexing, right? It's convenient for that, that thing to appear afterwards. <laughs> yeah, fair play. So timeline search looks at preceding siblings and ancestors recursively. Yep, nice. That way. Scroll progress with timeline offsets. Right. That may, this is something else. Let me just show you what it would look like. Say we have a cover page. Uh, very good. HTTP 203, good nice branding. gradient. I know you like gradients. Yeah, better than the gradient I used in my last episode. If I scroll down, this cover page will transition into a fixed header like this. And the content nice. will move underneath. Yes. How would you build this animation? Yeah, I mean... Or how would you build the scroll progress timeline? That's... Yeah, so you kind of want to... There's a stop point you're kind of saying where this animation should stop, like a, either a scroll yeah. offset yeah. or something. Yeah. That's 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 all I've got. Yeah, well, that, 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 that's it, that's it. Oh, um, nice. So our keyframes uh, would look like this. Um, we have our cover card, which starts at 100 dvh, and then in the end position, we want the height to shrink. We also adjust the font size a little bit, um, and then we give the body a padding top because we used position fixed, and otherwise the content would shoot underneath it. So we, we pull the content uh, back down. Of course. Um, so these would be the keyframes. Um, our scroll uh, progress timing that we want to build uh, would be here. You know what? Animate the cover car as we scroll the root scroller from zero to ninety dvh. Oh, nice. I see. So you're kind of setting the the boundaries for the yeah, yeah, like. It, this would be, I guess, in animation terms, the duration. But in this case, the duration is a length. <laughs> well, uh, a, yeah. A, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what CSS calls Instead a length. Instead of from zero to one hundred percent, you're using an actual pixel value somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So right, yeah. Rather than saying this animation is one second long, it is ninety dvh is long. Yeah. Okay, I get it. This doesn't work. Oh, mate, <laughs> I was starting to enjoy that. Sorry. Um, and yeah. that makes me sad. I know, to I'm be honest. sad now. Yeah, that makes you sad as well. Because this used to be in the spec. This was in the previous iteration of the spec. Who's, it, whose fault is it? Give me their name. No, don't give me their name. And it, 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 it's, it's gone now. Because I would love to see something like this where I can say, hey, you know what? Run this animation, scroll nearest block, and then over a distance from 0 to 90 VH. Yeah. Or maybe another syntax, animation time and offsets, where you say, hey, you know what? I guess the, the difficulty here is like, if we're saying that timelines could be used for other kinds of timelines, not just scroll timelines, then this, this stuff starts to not, well, this version doesn't make sense. Your other syntax did, because it was specific for scrolling. Um, but yeah, oh, go on, tell me, tell, why aren't we doing this? It just got dropped out of the spec with, with a bunch of rewrites. A lot of people have worked on it. Uh, authors have changed over, editors have changed over time, whatnot. So th that's why it like fell off the wagon somehow. I've created an issue for it within the working group, which yeah. says bring back scroll offsets. Yeah. So, the, but hang on, there isn't actually an alternative. It's just gone. Not right now. It just it fell off the wagon somehow during the rewrites. Yeah, um, yeah we need that back. Yeah, that's my opinion too. So. Um, yeah, that's why I created this issue, and we are we are discussing it. So hopefully, it will be back in, so that we can ship version one of the specification. I do wonder if this maps to animation durations and delays. Like right now, your your animation uh, duration and delay can only be uh, time. Yeah. But what we're talking about here is them being. Um, that would length. also affect. That yeah, your animation duration would be over a certain scrolling distance instead of a certain time. Because I guess right now, if you are like in these scrolling animations, duration doesn't mean anything. If your animation is ten seconds or ten years long, it doesn't matter because it gets remapped to. Yeah, it simply gets ignored because you've attached a different timeline. Right. That's that's what I'm going to go onto that issue and yeah. propose. Like, <laughs> what 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 if we we changed, uh, yeah, duration to to accept lengths. There we go. That's it. That's, and the default would be 
you know the it matches the 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 length of the the scroll yeah there you go solved so, Jake solved <laughs> <laughs> something to do after the episode okay yeah cool another part of the specification is the ability to track an element as it enters or exits the scroll port this is the intersection observer case. intersection observer exactly all right so here I have an example. If I scroll on the page, uh, take a very good look at the bottom. An element will appear there and it will animate. So I'm here now, and then as it oh, enters, that. it animates. And that wasn't scrolling. That was just it because it appeared in the viewport. The animation it is scrolling. Part. It is linked to the scroller that is scrolling, but it is not running from zero to one hundred percent. It is looking at the enter face of that element. It's so, so if you stopped that scrolling, would the animation stop halfway through? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. it is scrolling. Let me run the animation again for you. Here we go. Whoa. So here. So yeah. This is not quite like the intersection one. It's not. It's not like a trigger. It's. It, it's. It. Hang on. This sounds like it's got the offset thing that we wanted. For certain phases, yes, but you are not looking at, the, yeah, you are looking at a certain element. That that's the main idea here. You are looking at that element and uh -huh. not at a general offset. I see. Okay. For this, we don't need a scroll progress timeline. We've got a other concept uh -huh. uh, because it wouldn't cut it. We've got a view progress timeline. Oh, I see. View progress timelines are segments of a scroll progress timeline that are scoped to the scroll position, blah, blah, blah. And then it looks at a certain uh, element. Mm, so the nice. segments part, that's the interesting one because we can target four segments. The first segment is enter. So if an element enters, during that time, you can run a certain animation. Like we just saw, it was like expanding. Um, that was the animation was running during the enter stage. Mm -hmm. You also have another segment or, or stage or a phase. Uh, we're not sure of the name, like shedding. It's very hard. Uh, yeah. Exit is another one as it exits the scroll port. So, so yeah, so we're presuming that enter means from the bottom and exit means to the top. Yeah. And if you're going horizontally, it would enter from the right hand side and then leave at the left hand side. So question, it is possible for an element to be both entering and exiting if it is bigger than the viewport? No, we will, we will cut it. If it is bigger, then uh, only as a top uh, part is entering from the bottom. Uh -huh. Once it hits the top part of the layout view port, that will be the enter phase. Yeah, and then when and then the bottom exiting. part hits the bottom of the layout view port and leaves at the top edge, that's the oh, exit phase. I see. Okay, so it, it can be considered fully entered, or, or or it can be in neither the enter or the exit phase while there are parts of it still outside the viewport. No, hang on, <laughs> what's going on? Um, so if the element is half off the page. It, okay, I see. Okay, so it starts exiting. It starts, so if it's larger, it starts entering when the top edge of the element is yep. at the bottom edge of the layout viewport. I see. Once oh, yes, it so hits. Yeah. No, so I think I'm right yeah. still. Like, once, once the, if the element is bigger than the, the, the viewport, like, while it's, while it's in the middle, it's neither exiting or entering, even though yeah. parts of it are off screen in either we way. We call that face. Yay! <laughs> well, we call it contain not cover we've got four so we've got enter exit then cover is when it's outside to outside again uh -huh. so that is cover so that's the, the full thing but then contain is when it's contained within the boundaries of the yeah, view port I so see. what you just mentioned is that it would be um, it would go from enter to contain and then exit gotcha and cover spans from enter to exit i now understand yes. right so these are the four uh, segments that we can that we can target. Yeah, I get it now. Yeah, so when the, yeah, yeah, yeah. In JavaScript, we had scroll timeline the interface. So we obviously have a view timeline interface. It takes some parameters as well. Again, the axis and again, uh, a subject. I've got two images here. So two revealing images. I have wrapped them in a container because I want to look at the container as it enters. And then I want to animate the image contain inside it. Mm -hmm. We start off with this uh, JavaScript, we query selector all containers, and then for each container, we check uh, the image inside of there, and we need to animate the image. The animation 
using the Web Animations API would look like this, um, yeah. where the clip part, we clip it from the center and then it becomes visible and we also do the opacity. Um, but do note, we do image.animate and the subject is set to the um, revealing image container itself. So it is, it is different, isn't it? Because like, yeah, the, the this time it's you're pointing at the the element that is coming into the viewport rather than the element which is doing the scrolling. Yeah. Which which I guess it, it makes sense that those are called different things because they they are different different behaviors, right? Now you might be wondering, like, oh, okay, we have the view timeline there, but how do we target the enter phase? Because this is oh, specified yes. in here somewhere. So that's an extra property where we say time range enter. Interesting. So why is that not in the view timeline options and that's, that's ah. in the animation options? This will become uh, clear uh, when I show you the CSS example. Ah, uh, I But see. the goal is to reuse one view timeline, which you can then use uh, to target each and every single segment of it. I see. So you don't need to create new instances. That makes sense. In CSS, instead of scroll timeline, you have view dash timeline. Again, the name and the axis. Uh, or the shorthand if we want. And then onto our image, again, we set the animation dash timeline to revealing image, uh, and that way it will work. Nice. But I haven't shown you the keyframes, right? Yeah. The keyframes would look like this. Oh, I see. So instead of just having from or to or percentages in there, you are adding uh, the segment that you want to target. So you, you essentially be creating one animation, but you create the bounds for enter and exit, cover and contain with these yeah. labels. I see. You can also add the exit in there. You can also add the cover in there. You can also add the contain uh, in there as you want. And that way you have one set of keyframes that you can add to an element. So that were our view progress timeline. And mm -hmm. we also have the ability to set insets because by default, if we are looking at um, entering or exiting or uh, the cover phase, it would be between these two lines. I see. So this is this is going to sound very much like some of the things that you get on Intersection Observer. Yeah, because sometimes you want to like call it short yes. or, or make it longer. Yes. Okay. So that the enter stage starts at the bottom line already, and then the exit stage uh, only starts at the top line when it's already like a bit out of view. Um, for that, we have view timeline insets, two values, one for the start edge and one for the end edge. Okay. So the start edge being the bottom edge, yep. the end edge being the top one. And presumably yes. they can be negative. Yeah, so 10% uh, positive values, they go inwards. Yeah, like Negative like values, inset. they go outwards. Nice. And that way you can like change uh, the threshold from intersection observer. Similar, yeah, very similar. similar nice. If you're looking for more demos, right, what you can do with this, because yeah, it can be confusing. Like, okay, I've only shown shown a box that's revealing. You can do way more stuff with this, with these view progress timelines. Um, look at the top, where the oh, elements go good. out. Look at the bottom, where the elements Ha, huh, and that's just in. like a little translate on the... Yeah. Ah, oh, very good. So I'm looking at every list item in there, and then I am translating away the content as they enter or exit oh, uh, nice. the list. I think this has like a very native app-like feel to it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Very nice, very satisfying. Oh, is this, yes, I was just about to say, is this how you did the album covers? The album yes. covers is another example. Yeah, so I'm looking at the LI elements as they enter um, from the right there, and I am animating the image inside there, uh, which, is, which nice. is pretty nice. Uh, do note that I'm not, adjusting the LI elements themselves, but I am animating the images inside them. Because if I were to like uh, rotate the LI element, it would become smaller, it's bound incline rect, and then stuff oh. would happen if, if you are targeting. So, oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, you could sort of end up with a, is there, is there an infinite loop there? I don't know. The screen flickers. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it does feel sort of infinite loop territory because you're saying, I want to do something when this thing is here, but in the and rules of that, you can it move it. Yeah. yeah. So that's why that's I'm fun. targeting the, the list items and I'm animating the, uh, the images inside. Uh-huh. That's neat. Another thing... How did you build this? I mean, because we've been talking about how this is not in browsers. How, how did you build this? This version uses a polyfill 
but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another demo, and I like this one a lot, is stacking cards. Look at the cards as they hit the top edge. Oh, as they nice. move back, and then they move out as a group. Is there ways to apply easing to this? Because it's sort of like right now that the, the card animation sort of stops quite abruptly. Is there, are there ways to apply? Because yeah, you're using the, the scroll yeah. uh, as a timeline, but I guess you could still use easing on top of that? To... No, that, that's not the case right now. So there's a direct link between you scrolling and, and the animation. So that's a, a linear connection. Mm -hmm. um, there is, There are talks going on to potentially add that, but that's going to be for V2. That has already been pushed down the line. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. You can play with it today. I because will. Because you were wondering, like, how, how did you make all these demos? Yeah. But you can play with it today um, because... Robert Flack, again, oh, and his team. Sponsored by like <laughs> Robert Flack, all of these yeah. episodes. Robert Flack and the team. Uh, and Kevin is also on there. Maddie is also on there. Um, they have been working on a polyfill. Very good. Uh, a scroll timing polyfill. They already have the JavaScript version released. And at the time that you are recording this, so today, Maddie is actually working on the CSS version. Oh, very good. So by the time this video gets published, we will have a CSS polyfill available as well. Usual CSS polyfill caveats apply, I guess. Your CSS yeah, yeah, has to be yeah. same origin and uh, yeah, that like, all of that like sort of thing. The whole cool, off main thread thing no longer counts because of course. Yeah. We don't have the primitives for that. Yeah, that's really cool though. It means you can actually start um, testing out how this API feels, which I think yeah. is probably the most important yeah. bit. And developers can provide feedback, um, hopefully to, to spec people who will listen. Other good news. Um, the old version of the spec was behind the feature flag in Chromium-based browsers, so in Chrome and in Edge. Mm -hmm. um, talking to engineering, they said like, oh, new syntax. It's, it's like the main logic is there. We are simply rewiring a few things. So that will be cool, right? Mm -hmm. it, will, it will allow them to progress uh, very fast on it. Um, the Firefox folks have been working on it um, as well. Nice. So I'm very looking forward uh, to, to them shipping it anytime soon as well. <laughs> any, any communication from the Safari folks? I know they don't commit to things, but are, are they involved in any of the work? No. OK, well, you know, we'll, we'll see. It's the kind of high level feature I'd expect them to be interested in. Like yeah. some of the really like low level stuff that they don't tend to go for, but something that links into. And I know they've been looking at other kinds of animation timelines, like different frame rate ones as well. So, I, you know, I, I, I've got high hopes. So so have I. Um, that last thing there at the bottom, this is a code pen collection with all the demos that I've shown you Brilliant. that use the JavaScript version uh, polyfill. So that code is already there. Um, I will be adding the CSS version as well once we, we have that. Amazing. People should play with this today. Yeah, definitely. Because if we look at our uh, animation, uh, uh, because if we look at our... Yep. Yeah.